In this video, we'll take a look at working with JSON in Swift based on a blog post by Sam Agnew over on the Twilio blog. We'll be working with the Astronomy Picture of the Day API from NASA. The results of API calls in JSON look like this. And the first way we're going to look at dealing with it is Apple's Codable Protocol. That is Apple's way of encoding and decoding custom types such as JSON. It allows you to create structs that represent the JSON items and easily encode and decode them into structs that you can work with in your code. So I'm going to create a directory here called JSON Codable and change directories into it and open this all up inside of Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever text editor you want for this. After importing the foundation framework, we'll create a JSON string object that maps to the result that we just saw in the browser. Then we'll create a struct called APOD that conforms to the Codable protocol. That will allow us to map this structure to the JSON object up above. All we need to do is create a field for each property inside of the JSON that we want to have mapped in this structure. Our next step is to take the JSON string and create a JSON data object out of it using UTF-8 encoding. So we can call dot data on the JSON string and pass in UTF-8 for the parameter. Next we'll create a JSON decoder that we can use to decode that data into an object. Next we'll create APOD, which will be an APOD struct like we created above by calling decoder.decode, passing in APOD.self and from the JSON data object. Next, we can print the APOD dot explanation. So we've got a struct that maps to the JSON. We take the JSON string and put it into a data object. And then we use the decoder to de decode that into our structure. And then we can access the structure's property. If we run this Swift file, we'll see the explanation print out on the terminal. Next, we're going to take a look at Swifty JSON, which is a Swift package that allows you to work with JSON in a slightly different way. Ultimately, you're going to get a dictionary that represents the JSON object, but you don't necessarily need to know how the schema works beforehand. We'll see how that works in just a second. For this project, we'll use Swift Package Manager. So I'm going to create a new directory for this project called JSON Swifty JSON, and then run Swift Package init, passing in the type of executable to create a new executable project. And then we'll open that up inside of Visual Studio Code. I'll head over to the package.swift file, and in the dependencies section up top, I'll add .package, passing in the URL of the Swifty JSON GitHub repo, and a from version of 4.0.0. Then down in the target, we'll just add the Swifty JSON dependency into the dependencies array. Okay, now we'll head over to main.swift and replace the hello world, and we'll import Swifty JSON. After that import statement, we'll head down and create the JSON string that we worked with in the last project. It's exactly the same. All right, first thing we'll do here is we'll try to create data from this string. We'll call JSON string dot data, and we want to do that using UTF-8 encoding. And we're going to specify that we don't want to use lossy conversion. Okay, once we've created that, we'll set some JSON equal to an attempt to JSON decode the data from string. And if that works, we can print out the explanation value inside of the JSON dictionary. Notice we didn't have to specify anything for the structure. It is just figured out at runtime. We'll call it swift run, and that'll fetch our Swifty JSON package and then run our executable, and it works yet again. Now that we know how to work with JSON, let's see how to fetch some from an HTTP request. We'll use Alamofire because they have a very handy way to fetch JSON using response JSON. Once again, this is a Swift package, so we're going to create a new directory for the project and then use Swift package init to create yet another executable. And you guessed it, we'll open it inside of Visual Studio Code. Head over to the package.swift file, add a package dependency with the URL to the Alamo Fire GitHub. And once again, we'll use a version of 4.0.0. And once again, we'll head down into the target dependencies and add Alamo Fire. Heading back over to main.swift, we'll replace that hello world by importing foundation and Alamo Fire. Next, we'll use Alamo Fire to make a request to the NASA APOD API, passing in the demo key as we saw on their page earlier. And we'll call response JSON on this to fetch JSON from that API. There's going to be a response in here inside of this block. The first thing we're going to do is create a guard statement to make sure that the response was successful. And if it was, we can also try to set response.result.value into a JSON object. 
If those things are not possible because something went wrong with the HTTP request, we want to print out that there was an error and return out of here. Otherwise, we want to print out the JSON string to show that we successfully fetched JSON from the API. And then we'll call runloop.main.run to execute the program. Down inside of the terminal, I'll run swift run to run our executable. And there is the JSON string. You could now process this using either the codable at the beginning or Swifty JSON as we just showed in the previous example. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the subscribe button over on the left. If you want to watch another video, I picked one out just for you in the top right. And if you're looking for the code, there's a button in the bottom right for that. Until next time, I'm out of here.